just before the Jewish High Holy Days this fall, Judge Rachel Freyer was rushing around her kitchen, as she perpetually is. She had just cooked a salmon dish for Sabbath dinner. She was talking to her daughter in Israel on her headset. She was at a countertop, cutting apples and wrapping tuna salad sandwiches to take to work, because at night court in Brooklyn, where she presides, there's little to eat that's kosher. Stepping outside her townhouse in Borough Park, Brooklyn, she climbed into her purple and white minivan emblazoned with the emblems of the female volunteer emergency medical service she founded in her ultra-Orthodox Jewish community. A trained paramedic, she keeps her medical bags in her vehicle, just in case. My car is like my second home, she said. This is Rushi Freyer, as friends call her, a 52-year-old Hasidic Jewish grandmother who has blazed a trail in her insular religious community with so much determination that the male authorities have simply had to make room. Eleven years ago, she became one of the first Hasidic female lawyers in Brooklyn, and last November, she was elected as a judge to civil court, making her almost certainly the first female Hasidic elected official in the country. She has done so not by breaking the strict religious rules that govern ultra-Orthodox women's lives, but by obeying them so scrupulously that there are limited grounds for objection. I conformed, she said in an interview in her spacious living room. I just found some creative ways to extend what it means to conform. Along with her official duties, she serves these days as a kind of diplomat between Hasidic Jews and the secular world explaining the realities of the courts to the Hasidim and the habits of the Hasidim to the courts. And she has also been using her public platform to warn publicly of what she sees as a grave threat to her community's survival, an epidemic of lost youth and suicides that is driven, she believes, by an unforgiving culture of judgment among ultra-Orthodox schools and families that she feels needs to change. Last summer, she wrote a column for Vos Isnias, an online Orthodox news source, about Malki Klein, a Hasidic girl who had been expelled from her yeshiva and died of a heroin overdose in June. She quoted anecdotal statistics that estimate 70 Orthodox Jewish children have died of drug overdoses or suicide in the past year. What happened in our community, why have so many of our children been cast away thrown overboard into dangerous and troubled waters, she wrote. We need to unite and champion true Torah values to solve our problem. Most Hasidic women do not pursue high-profile success in the outside world. They are taught their most sacred role is to maintain the religious sanctity of their home and raise their children. What a woman does in order to enhance her glory is not put herself out as an example to other people in the public domain, but rather in private, in the home, said Samuel Heilman a professor of sociology at City University of New York and an expert on the Orthodox and Hasidic communities. The men are in the forefront, they run the world, and we are the power behind the throne, said Pearl Engelman, 70, a great-grandmother in the Satmar Hasidic sect in Williamsburg, who broke that paradigm several years ago by speaking publicly about a cover-up of child sex abuse cases in the ultra-Orthodox community.